اكرمك الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Welcome dear brothers and sisters May Allah Jalla Jalaluhu accept from you your footsteps to the house of Allah. And may He make this gathering a gathering of dhikr, a gathering of remembrance that is attended by the angels and spoken well of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the build up of the month of Ramadan, I speak today of a path that was taken by the prophets and messengers. A path that was taken by the revivalists that came after them, those revivalists that had an effect on humanity. We speak today of arguably one of the most effective tools in existence to repair Iman and to restore broken hearts and to amend relationships with Allah Jalla Jalalu. We speak today of an act of worship that is revived every year in the most exciting fashion and the most heartwarming of ways following the very first day of the month of Ramadan. An act of worship, however, that is then abandoned and neglected following the departure of the last night of Ramadan and the appearance of the first day of Eid. We speak today of an act of worship that we can describe as being the introduction to prophethood. An act of worship that we can describe as being paradise on earth. An act of worship that is not average in the least, but it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity. We speak today of none other than Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the famous hadith which I'm sure you have come across and this hadith is going to be our template for the short reminder today. Try to memorize at least this narration, it's all what we will need bi idhnillahi ta'ala. It is that narration which was recorded by Imam Tirmidhi in his jami' on the authority of Abi Umamat al-Bahili that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alaykum bi qiyami layli فَإِنَّهُ دَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَمَكْفَرَةٌ عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَمَنْهَاتٌ عَنِ الْإِثْمِ He said, uphold the night prayer. Take care of the night prayer because, memorize these three phrases now, because it is the way of the righteous people before you. And it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. And it is a means of erasing sins. And it is a means of guarding you from sins. La ilaha illallah. This one hadith is sufficient on its own to transform our perception towards this act of worship. So that we never ever see it the same way again. And it is very timely and appropriate that we speak of this hadith now, today. Bearing in mind that Ramadan now is just around the corner. And this is an act of worship that the overwhelming majority of Muslims are going to be engaged in night in, night out in the form of Salatul Taraweeh, the night prayer. But what is the night prayer? Is it limited to bowing and prostrating in the night? Is it an act of ibadah that is exclusive to the month of Ramadan? No, the hadith that we just heard makes it clear that this is something altogether different. What is Qiyamul Layl? Let us analyze now and examine the hadith that we just heard phrase by phrase. What was the first phrase? Do you remember? فَإِنَّهُ دَأْبُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ It is the way of the righteous people before you. If we speak of the righteous people, then how dare any human being mention any name before the name 
of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, in one of the earliest chapters of the Qur'an given to him, early in the seerah, early in Mecca, chapter 73 of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Muzzammil, Allah Almighty says to him, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Get up and pray at night, except a small amount of it. نِصْفَهُ أَوْ انْقُسْ مِنْهُ قَلِيلًا Half of the night, pray it. Or a little bit less than that. أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Or pray more than that if you wish and recite the Qur'an in a measured recitation. The majority of the scholars are of the view that this surah that you just heard or part of it, Surah Al-Muzzammil, is number three or number four from the chapters of the Qur'an given to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iqra' and Surah Al-Qalam and perhaps Surah Al-Muddathir Surah Al-Muzzammil, there is a different arrangement, but the majority of the scholars are of the view. Al-Muzzammil is number three or number four in the arrangement of the Qur'an. And therefore we can say that the instruction to pray at night given to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was one of the very first instructions given to him by Allah Almighty to prepare him for the difficulties ahead of him, to pray at night. And what is even more amazing is that in the surah, Surah Al-Muzzammil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the night prayer of the Prophet What does he say? إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُومُ أَدْنَى مِنْ ثُلُثَيِ اللَّيْلِ وَنِصْفَهُ وَثُلُثَهُ وَطَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ مَعَكَ Allah Almighty knows, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you are spending little less than two-thirds of the night in prayer or half of the night, or a third of the night in prayer, and a group of believers with you. Imagine, the Messenger وسلم, is praying almost two-thirds of the night in Qiyamul Layl, at a time when he only had three or four surahs of the Qur'an, Al-Muzzammil being the third or fourth. So what was he doing for two-thirds of the night? What Qur'an could he have been reciting? There was no Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran and Nisa and Ma'ida and Am. These long surahs, they weren't around at the time. What was he doing for two-thirds of the night, alayhi salatu wasalam, if all what we had was Surah Al-Muzzammil as being number three or number four? Was he repeating the same surahs over and over again? Was he engaged in dua and dhikr and istighfar? Regardless of the answer to this, what we know is that Qiyamul Layl occupied a high station in the life of the Messenger وسلم, in the introduction to his da'wah, in the middle of his da'wah, and shortly before he died, he was a man who prayed at night. It is the way of the righteous people before you. Abu Zinad, he says, listen to this and tell me if you've heard of anything like this before. He says, كنت أخرج إلى مسجد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في السحر فما أمر على بيت إلا وفيه صوت قارئ. He says, I used to make my way to the mosque of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in Medina during the latter part of the night, just before صلاة الفجر. Pitch black. And every single house that I would walk across, I would hear the sound of Quran being recited from beyond the walls. Everybody was awake. He said, وَكُنَّا نَحْنُ الْفِتْيَانِ إِذَا أَرَدْنَا الْحَاجَةِ نَقُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ قِيَامُ الْقُرَّاءِ And we, when we were young boys, kids, teenagers perhaps, whenever we wanted something from the adults, we would say to one another, let's wait for the hour of the night. Let's meet up in the hour of the night. Because they know if you want to meet the men, if you want to meet the woman, if there's something you require, everybody will be awake at what time? In the night time just before Fajr, everybody is worshipping Allah. Subhanallah. Tawus ibn Kaysan al-Yamani, the famous Tabi'i, he also says something similar to this. He says, Ma kuntu ara ahadan yanamu sahar I don't remember seeing anybody sleeping during the later part of the night. I don't remember seeing anybody ever sleeping in the later part of the night. Everybody was awake glorifying Allah subhanallah. 
Brothers and sisters, we ask sometimes, why is our situation the way it is today? This is part of the problem, undoubtedly. Because now if Tawus had seen our situation today, and I am no exception perhaps, perhaps he would say, I don't see anybody awake during that time. Who is awake except a few? It is the way of the righteous people before us. That is the night prayer. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal had a guest who visited him once, and he was a student of hadith. And so Imam Ahmad wanted to host him that night and allow him to spend the evening with him. And so he prepared for him a container of water so that he could do his wudu when he wants to pray at night. The next morning, Imam Ahmad came to wake him up and he noticed that the container of water had been unmoved. He hadn't prayed at night. So Imam Ahmad, rahmatullahi alayhi, was shocked and he said, Subhanallah, talibu hadithin la yakunu lahu wirdun min al-layl. He said, Subhanallah, I have never seen this before. A student of hadith who does not have a portion of night prayer? A student of hadith who doesn't pray at night? And we could repeat the exact same words by saying, Subhanallah, an ISOC committee member, a FOSIS member, a masjid committee member who does not pray at night? A Muslim parent who wants to raise Muslim children who are protected from the temptations and doubtful matters out there in society, and he or she doesn't pray at night? An imam, a khatib, an attendee of a halaqa, a deliverer of a halaqa, a person who shares Islamic reminders on Facebook, and does not have a portion of night prayer? Somebody who believes that the squeeze of the grave is real, and believes that he shall see the face of the angel of death, and believes on the day of judgment that will be 50,000 years long, and does not have prayer at night? How can that be? So this is phrase number one from the hadith. Do you remember it? It is the way of the righteous people before you. What was phrase, phrase number two? He said, if you remember, وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ and it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. For those who ask about a staircase that leads to the pleasure of Allah, for those who inquire about one of the shortest routes that lead to the acceptance of Allah, I say that you will find such a staircase in the middle of the night. Perhaps, dear brothers and sisters, this is one of the secrets why Allah Jalla Jalalu who offers so much to those men and women who pray at night. Because it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. Those who discipline themselves to pray, whether after Salatul Isha straight away or in the later parts of the night before Fajr, this is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. As he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he has offered so much in thanks, so much as a reward. What is the reward? You're probably now thinking, what is the reward of praying at night? And the answer to this question is, we don't fully know. Yeah, it's been kept a secret. For the most part, it is hidden. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in one of the most beautiful ayat, Surah Al-Sajda, Allah Almighty says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ Their sides forsake their beds. Their sides forsake their beds. They don't want to sleep. How come? يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا because they are calling their Lord out of fear and hope. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And from the money we've given them, they are spending. So, O oh Allah, what is the reward that you have offered them? Tell us, O oh Allah, in the ayah after it. The answer is, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَّا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِّنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah says, therefore, no soul, no soul, knows of the delights of the eyes that have been hidden for it as a reward for what they used to do. What is the reward of those who call upon Allah Almighty and cry to Him and beg for their needs and prostrate at the door of Allah Almighty every evening? What is their reward? Allah Almighty, no soul has any knowledge of this. It's a prize, a surprise for them on the Day of Judgment. Why has it been kept a surprise? Somebody may ask. Imam ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, takes a stab at the answer. And he says, Ta'ammal. Kayfa akhfa Allahu? Ta'ammal. Kayfa qabala Allahu? Ma akhfawhu min qiyamin lil-layli? Bil jazai alladhi akhfahu anhum 
He said, because the same way that they would make an effort to pray at night and to not allow anybody to see their good deeds, Allah Almighty will reward them by giving them a reward, by giving them a reward that no human being has ever seen. They made an effort to hide their good deeds by praying at night. So Allah Almighty has thanked them and compensated them by giving them a reward that is also hidden. However, does this mean that we don't know at all what the people of the night are going to be given on the Day of Judgment? We have no perception of the reward in Jannah for them? No, no, we do have some perception. And that is why Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrates in his jami on the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna fil jannati ghurafha. In Jannah there are rooms. In Jannah there are a specific type of rooms, special rooms, where you can see their outsides from their insides, and you can see their insides from their outsides. La ilaha illallah. So an Arab Bedouin man stood up and he said, Liman hiya ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, who do these rooms belong to? We want to reserve one of them ourselves. He said to him, four part recipe. He said, He aliman ataab al kalam, wa ataam al taam, wa adam al siyam, wa salla lillahi, bil layli wa nasuniyam. These are rooms, he said, that belongs to those who speak beautiful words and distribute food and continually fasts and pray at night when other people are asleep. Did you memorize those four? He said, it belongs to those who speak beautiful words and distribute food and continually fast and pray at night when other people are asleep. Is there anything else we know that Allah Almighty has prepared for the people of the night? Yes. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are three categories of people whom Allah Almighty loves and He smiles at them. Imagine Allah, Al Malik, the King, Al Rabb, the Kumpela, Al Jabbar, smiling at you. What must they have done to deserve the smile of Allah, Al Aziz, the Most Mighty? He said, There are three people whom Allah Almighty loves. And he smiles at them and he is happy with them. And he mentioned one of the three people, one of the three categories as being as follows. One of the three categories, he says, is a person who has a beautiful wife, a beautiful spouse, and a very comfortable, soft bedding. But then in the middle of the night, he gets up and he leaves his spouse, leaves his desire to remember Allah. So Allah Almighty will say to his angels, look at how my slave has left his bed and his desire in order to remember me. And if he wanted, he could have continued sleeping. Allah Almighty smiles at such a person. So you may think now, okay, what is the significance of the smile of Allah? What happens when Allah Jalla Jalaluhu smiles at a person? Imam Ahmad narrates in his Musnad that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said answering this question, وَلَوْ ضَحِكَ رَبُّكَ لِعَبْدٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَلَا حِسَابَ عَلَيْهِ When your Lord smiles at a person, he said, when your Lord smiles at a person in the life of this world, he will not have any accountability on the Day of Judgment. Backdoor entrance into Jannah. All of the horrors that you and I hear about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it doesn't apply to these people because they will not be held accountable. لا يحزنهم الفزع الأكبر The ultimate terror, the terror of Yawm Al-Qiyamah will not grieve them in the least. This is what happens when Allah smiles at a person. And one of the three people whom Allah smiles at is a person who gets up Remembers Allah Almighty and leaves his comfort, leaves his jail bed, leaves his beautiful spouse for short moments to glorify Allah Jalla Jalalu.
Some of the reward Allah Almighty has prepared for them. And that is why we said, وَهُوَ قُرْبَةٌ لَكُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ This was phrase number two. Do you remember it? It is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. He said, take care of the night prayer because it is the way of the righteous people before you. And it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. What was phrase number three? He said, and the night prayer is a means of erasing sins and is a means of protecting you from sins. Ya Allah. This is a profound statement, brothers and sisters. Dear brother, dear sister, if you have accumulated certain sins today or yesterday or at some point in your past, sins that you are so scared that Allah Almighty is going to remind you about them on the day of standing, then those sins can be erased at night. If you also have sins that you are afraid that you're going to redo sometime in the future because they're so addictive, they're so appealing, they look so good. You are afraid that after your repentance you're going to go back to them. You will find your shield and I will find my shield in the night. It is a means of erasing sins, meaning of the past. And a means of protection from sins, meaning from the future. All of that is found in the night. La ilaha illallah. And perhaps this is one of the secrets, dear brothers and sisters, why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam refers to the night prayer as sharaful mu'min. The honor of the believer. Because a person who minimizes his sin is honored in the eyes of Allah. And a chronic sinner is humiliated in the eyes of Allah and humiliated in his own eyes. We all know that feeling when you pull away from a sin, that bitter, cold feeling of anxiety, sadness, and misery, like fire that is eating away inside of you during the sin and after the sin, you really feel humiliated. These were the beautiful words of Al-Azza ibn Abdul Salam. Sins cause hearts, hearts to die. And Qiyamul Layl is a protection from sins. O oh, you who is struggling with a particular sin, whether it pertains to the opposite gender or a financial sin or a, uh, something that is consumed or something that is injected or something that is inhaled or something that is observed or something that is listened to or a clothing that is not observed, the night is the place to fix it. Therefore, the night prayer is sharaful mu'min, the honor of the believer. Angel Jibreel once came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, he gave him a khutbah. What did he say to him? He said to him, Ya Muhammad, Aish ma shi't fa innaka mayit. Wa ahbib man shi't fa innaka mufariquh. Wa amal ma shi't fa innaka majziyun bih. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ إِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ He said, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, live as long as you wish, but realize you're going to die in the end. And love whoever you wish, but realize you're going to be separated from them in the end. Do whatever you may wish, but realize you're going to be held accountable in the end. And realize, he said to him, underline this, and realize that the honor of a believer is found in his night prayer. And the dignity, the izza, the dignity of a believer is found when he or she is not reliant upon anyone. The dignity of a believer is found in his night prayer. The Messenger وسلم, was told by Angel Jibreel, dignity, real honor. And this is honor that Allah is going to publicize. Even if you try to hide it. If you are a sincere person, worshipping Allah when nobody can see you or hear you, whether you like it or not, Allah is going to publicize it. That is why Ata al Khurasani, he said, Qiyamu layli, mahyatun lil badan, wa nurun fil basar, wa diyaun fil qalbi, wa kuwatun fil badani, wa inna rajula. لا يصلي بالليل فيصبح فرحا يجد الفرح في قلبه. He said the night prayer gives life to the body and light to your vision 
and luminosity to your heart and strength to your limbs and a person who prays at night will wake up the very next morning feeling so happy a true happiness that mixes with his soul Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib from the Tabi'een, one of the students of Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, he said, a person who prays at night, Allah Almighty will cast luminosity over his face. His face will become radiant. And therefore people who don't even know him will say, Inni uhibbu hadha rajul, I love that man. You can't hide. If you are sincere worshipping Allah Almighty in the night, Allah Almighty will make your face glow by the day. And Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, who was the shaykh of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, when people would see him, they would say, Hada malak, that's an angel. Yeah, that must be an angel. And Waqi' ibn al-Jarrah, he used to pray at night. And Muhammad ibn Sirin, when people would see him, they would say, La ilaha illallah. They would say, Subhanallah, because of the radiance in his face. And Muhammad ibn Sirin used to pray at night. In fact, Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he speaks of certain women who used to pray at night so diligently. They would never miss their night prayer. And when she would be asked, how come you're praying so much at night? She would say, because the night prayer beautifies the face. And I would like a beautiful face. So the night prayer even has cosmetic benefits. Now, although this is not the main intention, not the intention of a believer, but these are side benefits that will come whether we like it or not. Allah will publicize an honorable believer who prays at night. So this was phrase number three from the hadith. Let us repeat it one more time. Take care of the night prayer. Because it is the way of the righteous people before you. And it is a means of drawing closer to your Lord. And it is a means of erasing sins. And it is a means of protecting you from sins. Here, allow us to conclude, dear brothers and sisters, with a few questions. I am sure, after hearing this remarkable hadith, all of us now are so eager for the hours and the minutes and the seconds to move very quickly from that clock to my left so that we may go back to our homes and worship Allah in the night. I am sure that the majority of us here at this moment in time, we are waiting for the, for the night to fully set in so that we may glorify Allah and start a brand new page with the night prayer. I know. However, perhaps we may have a few questions, therefore, that we would like addressed so that we may carry out this act of worship with goodness. Here are four questions that I am assuming some of us are perhaps harboring. Question number one. How much Qur'an am I expected to recite during the night prayer? Is there a certain amount that I need to read? Is there a threshold or not? The Messenger وسلم, has given us somewhat of an answer to this question. He said, as Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan, on the authority of the companion Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he said, مَنْ قَامَ بِعَشْرِ آيَاتٍ لَمْ يُكْتَبْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ وَمَنْ قَامَ بِمِئَةِ آيَةٍ كُتِبَ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ وَمَنْ قَامَ بِأَلْفِ آيَةٍ كُتِبَ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطِرِينَ Whoever prays at night using ten ayat from the Qur'an, Allah Almighty will not write him from the negligent ones. Alhamdulillah. You and I will not be negligent in the eyes of Allah. He said, whoever prays at night using 100 ayat from the Qur'an, Allah Almighty will document this person as being from the devout. Ya salam. He said, and whoever prays at night with 1,000 ayat from the Qur'an, Allah Almighty will write him amongst the muqantireen. Meaning those who are gathering qintars. What is a qintar, brother Ali? The majority of the linguists are of the view that a qintar is in reference to, just from an Arabic language perspective, arba'atu alafi dinar, 4,000 dinars of gold. Others of the linguists have said that it is qadrun azimun majhulun min al-man. It is a huge and unknown sum of money. That is what a qintar refers to. Others have said that a qintar is equivalent to a bull's skin worth of gold. But what we do know is that a qintar is a huge sum. However, the Prophet ﷺ has given us an idea of what he meant when he said qintar in another narration. Which at tabarani narrates in his mu'ajam. He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wal qintaru khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha. 
and one qintar is better than the dunya, the entire world and everything within it. A person who prays in salah for 1,000 ayat, 1,000 ayat, he is from the muqantireen in the eyes of Allah, gathering huge rewards. By the way, Imam ibn Hajar and others from the scholars have given a beautiful fa'ida, a beautiful benefit. Take note of this. They have mentioned that from Surah Tabaraka, chapter 67 of the Quran, Surah Al-Mulk, from that surah to the end of the Quran, Surah Al-Nas, there are 1,000 ayat. You would like to revive this sunnah perhaps of reciting 1,000 ayat if you recite the two ajza, the two juz from Tabarak till Surah Al-Nas, you have recited 1,000 ayat. So this is question number one, how much am I expected to recite? Question number two, uh, what if my memorization of the Qur'an is little? Brother Ali, I am working on it. I am trying to fix my tajweed. And I hope one day to be a full memorizer of the Qur'an, somebody may say. But at this moment in time, I crave to worship Allah at night. But my Qur'an is so little. What do I do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers this question in Surah Al-Muzzammil. He said, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Recite whatever is easy for you from the Qur'an. Recite whatever is easy for you from the Qur'an. And I believe that the majority of us here have at least memorized قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ سُورَةُ الْإِخْلَاصِ According to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Bukhari and Muslim narrate, this one surah is equivalent to one third of the Qur'an. Allah is kareem, brothers and sisters. Allah has offered Jannah and the highest gardens as well. But who are those who are willing to roll up their sleeves and work for these gardens? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is one third of the Qur'an. And that is why Abi Nu'aym narrates in his Hilya on the authority of Abu Ghalib who said that Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab would sometimes visit us in Mecca. And on one particular night when he visited us, there was only a few moments left of the night before dawn, before Salatul Fajr. And so Abdullah ibn Umar, he said to me, Abu Ghalib, قُمْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ وَلَوْ أَن تُصَلِّيَ بِثُلُثِ الْقُرْآنِ He said, Abu Ghalib, why don't you pray at night? Pray some units of salah in qiyam, the night prayer, even if you only recite something little like a third of the Qur'an. He said, subhanallah, how am I going to recite a third of the Qur'an, O Abdullah? And Fajr is, is just round the corner. He said to him, don't you know that قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ equates to one third of the Qur'an? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ equates to one third of the Qur'an. So this is the answer to question two. What if my memorization of the Qur'an is little? Question number three before we conclude with the fourth. Somebody may ask, what if I intend to sleep? I intend to sleep and then wake up and pray at night, but I have this habit of sleeping through my alarm clock. But I really had the intention to worship Allah at night. I slept in a state of wudu and I did my adhkar, my remembrances. I slept to my right. I tried my best to sleep early as well, as is the sunnah. But I slept straight through it. What do I do? Alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty will not leave you empty-handed. And that is why the Messenger sallallahu said, as Imam al-Nasa'i writes in his sunnah on the authority of Abi Darda, he said, Man ata firashahu wa huwa yanwi an yaquma min al-layli faghalabathu aynahu حتى أصبح كتب له ما نوى وكان نومه صدق عليه من ربه عز وجل يا الله he said whoever goes to his bed in the evening with the intention of waking up to pray but then his eyes overcome him in sleep and he wakes up when it is dawn Allah Almighty will write for him the intention of the night prayer Allah Almighty will write for him the full reward of the night prayer and the sleep that he had engaged in would be a sadaqa from Allah to him. Allahu Akbar, Allah is kareem, Allah is generous. Therefore with that perhaps we can conclude with the fourth and final question which is, what if I am continually struggling to taste and to enjoy the sweetness of the night prayer? Ya Akhi Ali, somebody may say, I hear so many people praising those beautiful moments saying they are paradise on earth and they really are paradise on earth. For those of us who have experienced it. 
But as Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali in his book, Lata'if al-Ma'arif, he says, not everybody has experienced it. مَن لَمْ يُشَارِكْهُمْ فِي هَوَاهُمْ لَنْ يَدْرِ مَا الَّذِي أَبْكَاهُمْ those who have not experienced this beauty will not know what makes the righteous people cry. The same way that those who have never seen the beauty of Yusuf will never know what was it that caused his father to cry. Those who have not experienced it can never really put it into words or give the night prayer justification, uh, will, can, can never give it justice. And that is why Sulaiman al-Darani, he says, speaking about this paradise on earth, he said, he said the people of the night as they worship Allah they experience a sweetness that is far greater than the joy of the sinners and if it wasn't for the worship of the night I would have asked Allah Almighty to cause me to die real joy real ecstasy that they experienced during those moments that no words could ever give justice to. So somebody may turn around and say, Ya Akhi, I have never experienced that. I stand and I pray and I'm just kind of moving from side to side thinking, when is it going to be fajr so that I may knock down those two rakat and go straight back to bed. No enjoyment. When will it come? Ya Akhi, it will come with mujahada, with striving and patience. It will take time. When you force your soul towards Allah and the home of the hereafter, eventually it will surrender. Yeah, it will put up its guard and it will resist and it will say, I don't want to. It's too cold. It's too long. It's too difficult. In the end, if it sees that you are serious in taking it to Jannah, the soul has to surrender. And these were the words of Thabitul Bunani, who was describing his relationship with the night prayer. And he spoke about this process. He said, كَابَتُّ الصَّلَاةِ عِشْرِينَ سَنَةِ وَتَنَعَمْتُ بِهَا عِشْرِينَ سَنَةِ I forced myself to pray at night for 20 years. I forced myself to pray at night for 20 years. And then I enjoyed the night prayer for the remaining 20 years. It will take time, dear brothers and sisters, until you and I are able to unlock that sweetness. But when it comes, we will not want to replace it for any other joy in existence. It is really a paradise on earth. So congratulations to those who illuminate their graves before they are leveled inside of it. Congratulations to those who please their Lord before they meet Him. Congratulations to those who pray before they are prayed upon. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to make us the people of the night to make salah and siyam and tawheed and islam sweeter to us than cold water. We ask Allah Almighty to forgive us and to forgive our mothers and fathers and to make our homes in firdaus al-a'la. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Are there any questions, brothers, that you would like to uh, pose or perhaps a contribution that you would like to add? Please go ahead. Brother asks, what is the best time to pray Qiyamul Layl? First of all, Qiyamul Layl is a time that extends from any time between Salatul Isha and just before Salatul Fajr. All of this is considered to be as Qiyamul Layl. Yeah? And some of our predecessors would pray in the first part of the night and some would pray in the latter part of the night. However, the latter part of the night has a special quality. The last third of the night, because this is a time where Allah Jalla Jalaluhu descends in a manner that befits His Majesty and glory. And He says, هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ فَأَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ هَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ فَأُعْطِيَهُ Is there any dua that I can answer? Are there any requests that people have of me? Allah Almighty descends during that time, the last third of the night, to the first heaven. And therefore, it is a very virtuous time. And that is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He praises those who pray at Al-Ashar. Al-Ashar, which is the plural of Sahar. Sahar, it means the last portion of the night when it is darkest. And this is why they call Sihir, magic Sihir, because it comes from the same root. The magicians, they will usually do their work in the night. So when it is called Al-Ashar, it means the darkest portion of the night. Allah says, وَالْمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ ashhar, Praising them, those who do istighfar during Al-Ashar. So, two-part answer. Qiyamul Layl is from Salatul Isha until Salatul Fajri, and the most virtuous of time is to pray it, is to pray it 
before Salatul Fajr. However, brothers and sisters, gradual, graduality is important in everything. And for he who is still perhaps introducing Qiyamul Layl into his routine, perhaps he should think about starting with just two units, two light units after Salat Isha. So he prays his Isha in congregation as far as the brothers are concerned. And then he or she at home will perhaps pray two Sunnah. And then they will pray two. If they feel energetic, they will pray four. And then they will stick with that for a while until it becomes part and parcel of their routine. And then there will be obviously the Witr Salah. And then later on, they may want to increase this to four or eight. And then they may want to, want to sleep and then wake up in the last third of the night and pray two there. And then maybe four there. And to work your way up until we are ready for Ramadan and ready for the rest of the year after Ramadan. Anything else, brothers? Brother, he asks a question, can he uh, recite the Qur'an or can he pray in Qiyamul Layl, the voluntary salah, using a tablet or a device or the mushaf itself? And according to the many, many scholars, you can because our mother Aisha, she at times in Ramadan would be led by her mawla, a servant of hers, and he would recite Qur'an from, a, from, a, from the mushaf. Ayna. Any other questions? Yeah, brother asks after the witr salah there should be there should be no salah. That is correct. The Messenger وسلم, he said, La witrani fi layla. There should be no two witrs in one night. So generally speaking, the Messenger وسلم, said, Make your last salah odd. Make your last salah witr. So you will pray two and two and two, whatever you can, and then you will conclude with a odd number one or three or five or something to that effect. However, if you want to pray your witr salah, or you have prayed your witr salah, but then you have a desire to pray more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing wrong with that. There is a narration in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim on the authority of our mother Aisha, where she attributed this act to the Messenger وسلم, where he prayed witr once and he prayed extra after it. So there is nothing wrong with doing it if you wish to do so. Yes, after your prayer, your witr, if you want to pray more, you can do that. Yeah, but generally what is best is to make your last salah witr, to make it an odd number. Yeah. Yeah, so if you are confident that if you delay your witr, you will make it at that time, then it is better to delay your witr for the last third of the night. If you fear, however, you know, for example, that you got a very heavy sleeping pattern and you will sleep through it, it is better to pray the witr before you go to sleep. Yeah? If you are praying your witr, yeah. So, the brother, he asks a question, if you f did not pray your witr for whatever reason and then Fajr came in, you can make it up after Salatul Fajr according to many of the scholars. Because this is a salah that has a sabab. This is a salah that has a sabab, meaning this is a salah that has a reason. Yes, after Salatul Fajr, this is a prohibited time to pray. But according to many of the scholars and the Shafi'is of, the, of, the, of this view, that if you're going to pray, even within the times where it is not recommended to pray, but you're praying a salah that has a reason to it. Yeah, like qada, making up a miss salah, making up a witr, making up a sunnah, praying the two rak'at of wudu, salatul istikhar, or something to that effect, then it is not included in the prohibition or in the detestable nature of praying at that time. So you can make it afterwards, make it up afterwards. Now. And also, what the scholars have mentioned is that the Messenger, sallallahu um, his, his witr was usually 11 rak'at. In other words, he would pray eight rak'at, yeah, two, 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 and then he would pray three as a witr, so it would be 11. And on one particular time where he missed his qiyam, he prayed it at the duha time. He prayed it at the duha time, and he prayed it at 12. So the sum of the scholars, what they say is that if you usually pray one rak'ah witr, then when you make it up, pray it as two. And if you usually pray three witr, this is your usual custom, when you make it up, pray it four. Because the way of the Messenger وسلم, was 11 witr, 
And when he missed it, he prayed it as 12. That is their evidence. And Allah Almighty knows best. Anything else, brothers? SubhanAllah, I don't think we have access to the questions from our sister's side. So perhaps maybe yani, we could try to compensate them in another way, inshallah. Yes, so a person who has, a brother, he asks a question that if you miss your salah, do you have to engage in qada, meaning to compensate the salah? And the answer is yes. And when do you, when do you, uh, um, uh, when do you, what is the time to make up the missed salah? The answer is as soon as you remember it. Because Allah Almighty said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ Remember your Lord if you forget. Yeah? Uh, he said, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي This is the dalil. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Establish the prayer for my remembrance, Allah said. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. So some of the scholars have mentioned that you make up the prayer that you have missed as soon as you, as soon as you remember it. Aina. Uh, brother, he asked a question that if you miss the witter prayer, are you sinful? The witter prayer, Akhi, is one of the most emphasized sunan. And the scholars have deferred with regards to a person who misses the pra- sunnah prayer consistently. Is he sinful or is he not sinful? But that difference of opinion does exist. So the witter is haq, as the Messenger وسلم, said. It is truth. Yani it is it is. Uh, it is heavily emphasized, we can translate it as that, al witru haq. So a person, he should not omit it at all. And some of the scholars have even mentioned that a person who consistently misses his witr salah, his shahada is marduda, his testimony is rejected. So this person is no longer seen as a credible Muslim anymore. His testimony in court would not be accepted because he is a man who misses his witr salah and some of our salaf they said and i believe it's imam ahmad uh, that he was asked about a person who does not pray his witr salah he said thalika rajulu su this is an evil person this is an evil person so let's make an effort brother, uh, brothers and sisters even if it is just one rak'ah that we make one rak'ah even if you're shattered and you're tired and you've come home and you just want to jump into bed one rak'ah and make your make your last unit of salah, witr and odd number, because Allah, he is an odd number, Allah witr, Allah is one, and this is why he loves the odd numbers, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, brother asks, is the qunut uh, necessary as part of witr? It is not necessary, meaning salah is valid without the qunut. And there is a difference of opinion regarding the qunut of Salatul Fajr. Anyway, um, we have the dua of Al-Hasan ibn Ali, which Imam Al-Tirmidhi records, uh, the, the famous dua that we are taught to say in the witr salah. But because this is an act that was not famously reported in the sunnah, so what some of the fuqaha have said, it is better sometimes to omit it. Yeah, it is better sometimes to omit it. Ahsant, if you're going to pray the three rak'at as a witr, Witr as three rak'at, you have two formats. Either you pray two rak'at and then you give salam, and then you pray a unit by itself, or you pray three continuous ones with one salam in the end. And there is a hadith in the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim where the Messenger وسلم, said, do not pray your witr salah like you pray your maghrib salah. Don't pray your witr salah like you pray your maghrib salah. Meaning you, you pray two, you do tashahud, and then you get up and you pray a third. And again, brothers and sisters, yani, uh, let's not get maybe uh, hard-headed about these matters. I understand that there are different schools of thought about these matters. I'm just telling you, these are the opinions that I work with. And alhamdulillah, there are other opinions and they have their evidences as well. And our hearts should encompass them. Barakallah feekum. Anything else? Barakallah feekum. طيب وصلى الله على نبينا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين